Franklin is Messy by Poet Bourgeois and illustrated by Brenda Clark. Franklin could count forwards and backwards. He could zip zippers and button buttons. He could count by twos and tie his shoes. But Franklin was so messy that he could hardly ever find his things, even special things. One day, Franklin searched for his sword. It was special because he made it himself from cardboard and wood and string. Franklin needed it to play knights in armor with his friends. He looked all over. He found a bag of marbles he thought he had lost. He found a brown apple core. He even found his favorite baseball cap, but he couldn't find his sword. Have you seen my sword? Franklin asked his mother. Franklin's mother looked around his room. She shook her head. All I see is a big mess. Please tidy this room before you go out and play. Franklin muttered to himself, why all the fuss about a little mess? He had more important things to worry about. He might miss playing knights. Franklin hurried. He opened his closet and heaped an armful of books inside. He piled all of his blocks in the middle of his room. He threw his cap in the corner and put the apple core in a drawer. All done, he said to himself. Still, he hadn't found his sword. By the time Franklin reached Bear's house, his friends were already playing knights in armor. Bear slashed the air with his sword. Beaver lunged at evil dragons. Hurry, Franklin, shouted Bear. We need you. I can't, whispered Franklin. The game stopped. Why not? They asked. I don't have my sword, said Franklin. Bear was disappointed. But how can we play knights without swords, he asked. Franklin looked around. He found a stick on the ground. I'll use this, he said. They fought dragons all afternoon. Tomorrow, said Franklin, I will have my own sword. Then we can save Lady Beaver from a fiery dragon. We are courageous, Sir Franklin and Sir Bear. Beaver slapped her tail down hard. I don't want to be saved. I want to be a brave knight, too. All right, said Franklin. You can be Sir Lady Beaver, and together we will save the king. You'll need your special sword, said Bear. Of course, said Franklin. When Franklin got home, his father was annoyed. I found this in your drawer, he said, holding the apple core. That's not where it belongs, and I found this cap on the floor. That's not where it belongs, either. Franklin threw the apple in the garbage and hung up his cap. Why all the fuss about a little mess? Goose came by looking for a puzzle she had loaned to Franklin. Can I please have my puzzle back? She said. Franklin looked. His room was such a mess that he couldn't see the puzzle among the books and crayons and blocks. Maybe it's in my closet, said Franklin. Franklin opened the closet. It was messy in there, too. He stepped inside. Crunch! It was a very loud noise. Franklin's parents came rushing in. Are you all right? they asked. I'm all right, said Franklin, but my sword isn't. He held up the shattered pieces. What a mess, Franklin said sadly. Maybe you need more places to put your things, said Franklin's mother. They found boxes in the basement. They painted them and named them Toy Box, Puzzle Box, Costume Box, Block Box. They put books on the bookshelf. Then they put a special hook on the back of the door. 
for a new sword. The tidying up took a long time, but it wasn't so bad because Franklin found lots of things he thought he'd lost. Goose's puzzle, his own favorite purple crayon, and enough cardboard, wood, and string to make a new sword and even a shield. The next morning, Franklin dressed in full armor. He was especially proud of his new shield. It said, Sir Franklin, loyal and brave. Sir Franklin, said his mother, I think you forgot something. Franklin's mother whispered in his ear. Franklin smiled. They took a crayon and added two more words to his shield. Sir Franklin, loyal and brave and neat. Franklin showed us that when we obey, good things can happen. Did you know Jesus showed us how to obey? Let's watch today's Bible story and see what he did that was obeying God. Stories of the Bible, the baptism of Jesus. This is Jesus, Hey-o! who's the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Jesus was born in Bethlehem and grew up in Nazareth, where he grew in wisdom and favor with God and man. Oh, I see. This is John the Baptist. Hey! John loved God with his whole heart. Hey, all you. And he told everyone that the savior of the world was coming soon. Wow! Come on. John baptized people in the Jordan River. Woohoo! And one day, Jesus went to this river to be baptized by John. Hold on. But John tried to talk him out of it. Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. Eh, okay. So John baptized Jesus, and as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens opened and John saw the Holy Spirit coming down as a dove and resting on Jesus. A voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved son, who brings me great joy. And John knew, without any doubt, that this was the one they had all been waiting for. This was the chosen one of God who would take away the sin of the world. Kids, I wanted to talk with you about a word. The word is obedient. What does it mean to be obedient? Okay, I'm going to give you a couple examples. You decide whether or not you're being obedient in this situation. Your mom asks you to brush your teeth and you run outside to the backyard. Was that being obedient? Nope, it wasn't. How about your grandparent ask you to wash your hands and you decide just to keep playing with your toys? Is that being obedient? Nope, not being obedient. Okay, how about this one? You're after dinner, your dad asks you to clear your plate and take it to the kitchen. And so you pick your plate up after you're finished eating and you take it to the kitchen. Was that being obedient? Yes, your dad asked you to do something and then you followed those directions. That was showing obedience. Now, why did your dad ask you to clear your plate? Well, he was probably trying to teach you manners and that is because he loves you. Why was your grandmother asking you to wash your hands? Why was she asking you to be obedient with that? Well, it's because she loves you and she doesn't want you to get sick. And why was your mom asking you to brush your teeth? Why did she want you to be obedient in that way? Well, it's also because she loves you and she wants you to have healthy teeth. 
You see, Jesus also wants us to be obedient. He has ways in which he wants us to follow him. And part of that is being obedient to things that he talks about in his word. And you know why he wants us to be obedient? Because he loves us. I will be reading from John fifteen ten. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love.
show you something. I right now in front of me have a cup and some crackers. That's because right now is our moment to remember Jesus and take communion. So first I want to read from Luke 22, starting in chapter or chapter 22, starting in verse 19. This is Jesus. He took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this to remember me. And after supper, he took another cup and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice to you. So when we take this cracker, or back then it would have been some bread, we break it and we eat it to remember Jesus. And then after that, we then take the cup and we drink from it to also remember the sacrifice of Jesus. So I'm gonna pray over these things and then I'm gonna take communion. Dear God, thank you so very much for who you are in our lives. Thank you for the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross, dying for our sins. And thank you that we have something like communion as a moment that we may remember you by God. Remember what your son did for us. Help us to have a great week and help us to remember you and all that we do. And in your name I pray, amen. Have a great week, Northside. Jesus Go. taught us to obey.